Hello and welcome. This is day four of my attempt to learn to use Python in Excel, which might seem premature to be doing a week one recap, but it's Friday in the US uh, and it's Friday of a holiday weekend. So I'm going to be traveling all weekend, visiting family. Uh, I may get to, you know, occasionally peruse some uh, Python articles, learn a thing or two, but I definitely won't get around to making any videos. So next video might get to record it next Tuesday, might not go up until Wednesday. It's going to be a, at least a few days. So I thought I would do just a week one recap, what have I learned from a few days of messing around with Python in Excel? Well, first thing that struck me in a very kind of pleasant way is that the ideas are very similar, um, especially after spending a bunch of time, which I have over the last like year or so, um, working with dynamic arrays in Excel. Um, just a lot of, a lot of the kind of things to do feel kind of familiar. If I say, oh, I want to be able to do this Excel thing in Python, a parallel usually exists. I think there's a natural next stage that comes after this where I start thinking a little bit more in a native Python way and not having Excel ideas and translating them to Python. And that'll probably allow me to do some things even better. Um, I'm getting that a little bit already with list comprehension because it's amazing. Uh, that's, that's uh, well, I'll come to that in a second. Um, but uh, so sorry, I guess the other kind of thing on this, the idea is very similar is like I've been doing these daily challenges, the camera Muntaz challenges and the Excel BI challenges. And what I find is I look at them and I immediately know because I'm, I'm just very used to Excel. I immediately know how I would solve them in Excel. Uh, and then it's not that hard to translate that into the equivalent thing in Python. So number two, I only did a little bit of this in the video. I've played around with it a little bit more off screen. Uh, regex is way more powerful. And I know that all the real Python programmers out there are like rolling their eyes. Oh, come on, we've been telling you Excel losers that for years. But there's a difference between hearing it and experiencing it for yourself. And regex is amazing. I'm going to show you some more uh, kind of tricks I've learned with that next week. And uh, there are a lot more tricks to learn, um, but I love it. Uh, number three, list comprehension is amazing amazing. Um, it's like the, the natural way of iterating over things in Python is one of my favorite things about it. Um, it just feels so, I mean, natural, I guess is the word. It feels so intuitive to me um, after kind of relatively little time using it to play around with that. And actually for both of the, the latest daily challenges I did, uh, I've, I've got like a, a kind of one line solution using lots of list comprehension. I'm going to show you both of those solutions uh, in just a couple of minutes. But then last thing is, let's think about what's next. Um, I, you know, I feel like it's somewhat of a kind of fitting way to round out week one that I've got the, the sort of neat one line solution to the two daily challenges. I wouldn't want to suggest that means there's nothing else to learn from those. There's loads else to learn from them um, because I'm still... I have the neat ideas, but actually kind of writing those out syntactically is still, I, I have still still need a lot of reps, still need to get used to that. But I do want to look ahead and I'm pleased this is a little sooner than I was expecting to look ahead, but a couple of things that are on my radar. One is um, I do want, I've always kind of hoped that I would do this at some point, but uh, I want to try doing one of these Excel esports cases. Learning Python and looking at some of these through that lens has given me a bit of an appreciation for how many different kinds of things I know how to do in Excel. Um, but I want to I want to pick up more of those things, and I, I think I'm at a stage now where I can at least have a go at it, um, and it could be fun. So that's the next thing on my list. The other thing um, I did this. Uh, project on my blog. <laughs> you didn't probably didn't know I have a blog because nobody goes there anymore, but it's called the Excelements. Uh, and I wrote on it for a few months back in 2016. But I did this fun project on mapping divisions in the US Senate. And the, the core piece of it was this thing called multidimensional scaling. Uh, and the idea is that you can project very, very high dimensional data down to two dimensions and keep a lot of the main properties of it if you do it the right way. Um, and so the idea is that this is a map of all the senators in the US Senate. Uh, and this is not so much an axis as it is a scale that shows the the distance between them is a very, very, very close approximation to the percentage of time that they disagree that they disagreed with each other on votes. So in other words, two senators who are kind of right on top of each other voted together almost all the time. Two senators who are very far apart, like say Ted Cruz and Elizabeth Warren, still very far apart, uh, disagree with each other almost all the time. Um, and the, the interesting thing about this, there were, there were some kind of other articles about it at the time, but like if you look at this for 1989, 
there was much kind of tighter overlap and you know there were even some kind of blue dots that you could be forgiven from mistaking for red dots and the other way around uh, and then by the time you get to 2016 there's this huge gap in the middle no no kind of center ground I had a lot of fun doing that and I thought it would be cool to try to do that for like every year and see how it evolved but it was just it was really computationally intense and challenging to do that in Excel. And so I just mentioned a few days ago that there were projects that I had either abandoned or just not pushed as far as I could have because of those limits. This is one of them and I'd love to revisit it once I know a little bit more. Um, so that's, that's kind of some things I'd like to get to next week or uh, I don't know if I'll get to the multidimensional scaling next week. That might be ambitious, but next week or thereafter. But just to wrap up today's video, I want to show you the, the two solutions to the two daily challenges. So first one, the XLBI challenge, uh, list all of the input numbers, which are autobiographical numbers. And an autobiographical number is a number where, I don't know if you can see, I don't know where exactly my screen cuts off, uh, a number where the first digit is equal to the number of zeros in the number, the second digit is equal to the number of ones, third digit is equal to the number of twos, tenth digit is equal to the number of nines. Um, so couple of important things here. One is list comprehension, uh, as I mentioned before, and will no doubt mention again. Another important thing here is the ability to switch between um, strings and uh, strings and numbers in Python. So it's a very similar idea to in Excel. If I have a number three and then I uh, append string concatenate an empty string onto that, it turns into a string three, and you can see that because in the native, in the sort of default alignment, strings align left, numbers align right. And if I have a, a text three, then I can multiply it by one or add zero or various other things, and that'll turn it back into a number. The equivalent to those things in Python, right now I've got a number here, you can see it's uh, right aligned. I'll just turn that into that. And then, so I can turn it into a string by wrapping it in str. Uh, and now you can see it's left aligned, and I can turn a string back into an integer, by, or back into a number by wrapping it in int. I don't actually know if that works for non-whole numbers. Interesting question. Uh, that's a that's something to put on the roadmap for later, but not right now's problem. The nice thing about it is I've mentioned, you know, the ability to iterate over things is my favorite thing about Python. Um, so strings are iterables in Python. Uh, and one of the things you can do with an iterable is enumerate it like this. Uh, sorry, I have to wrap this in list. Um, that's just a Python thing to get used to. But so here we are. This is the first, second, third, and fourth character of that word. And next to it is an index column. Again, zero-based indexing in Python. And you can iterate over this for, you know, a number from here and a character from here. And that's basically exactly what this list comprehension solution does. So one line. So let's, uh, let's break it down. Start from here. So we, for each, um, for each number, we're going to enumerate the string of the number. And then we're going to take a pair of an index number and a digit, which is going to be a, a string, in that. Okay? And then uh, we're going to see how many times does that index number occur as a digit in that number. And that's here. That is, you convert the number into a string, and then you say dot count uh, the string of the index. So you, you got to string both pieces because again, dot count is using the fact that the string is naturally an iterable. Uh, so it's saying how many of the kind of iterable characters in that string are this thing. So you convert the number to a string, convert the index to a string and count. And that tells you how many of that, um, how many uh, of that index occur as a digit. And that should be equal to the digit in that position. Uh, and again, the digit, because the digit is enumerating the, the string, so the digit is a um, the digit is a string number, but this count is a, a number number, so you just have to int that to turn it into a number, and then compare them equal equal to say are they equal, uh, and then we wrap that in all. So as you run over, you know, are there uh, are is there one of this? Is there two of this? Is there one of this? Is there zero of that? Uh, as you do that over each. Uh, pair of index and digit, then you just wrap that in all, which is the equivalent in Excel of and, uh, and that that basically tells you, is this number num autobiographical? And then the, the outer list comprehension just says, give me number for number in this list of numbers here, if this condition is true. And that's it. Uh, then the, there's like a function version as well. I can define a function that says, is auto number, uh, and then that just returns that same thing all of this condition for index and digit in the enumeration um, and then we can uh, we can use that to create a mask so you know df0 dot apply is auto creates a boolean mask just like this thing here and then we can just 
put that in between square brackets after df and it filters to the ones where that is true. Um, so like I said, the idea came to me pretty quickly on this one. The syntax was a real pain. And the thing that I kept doing wrong is I was missing this zero. Uh, so I, I just kind of thought, because Python can iterate over all kinds of things, why on earth would it not be able to tell that this XL of that is something I want to be able to iterate over to get each of these values. But for whatever reason, that's not how it works. Fine, you got to get used to that. Uh, I was missing the zero. So here, I just put it over here as today's mistake, can't iterate a data frame. So here's here's the data frame first column with the square bracket zero, I for I in that, there's the whole column. Here's I for I in the whole data frame, nothing, just returns zero. And I, it, it took me ages to debug this because I was convinced, because I hadn't used all before, I was convinced that I was using all wrong and that somehow all was reaching outside its scope in the list comprehension to like wrap around everything. Uh, eventually I realized that wasn't the problem at all. Anyway, that's that one. And then the other uh, daily challenge is this guy here. Uh, so here, make a table by matching the criteria if it exists in the value column in the same sequence. So in other words, if there's a 333 somewhere in here, then we get, and there is indeed, so here's Levi's that has a 333 in the code. Um, if there's a 406, and sure enough, Wrangler down wherever it is down here has a 406 in the code and so on. So basically we're, we're looking for each one of these in here and then we're returning the criteria, the buyer and the value. Um, now th this topic was silent on A, what to do if there are multiple matches because as it happened there were only one and B, what to do if there are no matches. Uh, so I didn't give a whole lot of thought to that but here's, uh, here's the solution. Again there was a syntactic thing that tripped me up here but uh, let's let's start here. So um, for for C in the list of criteria, and again we project out to just the first column uh, so that it can iterate over those. So for each C is each one of these criteria. So then for a given criteria, this is the um, this is the list comprehension that we do. So we say uh, give me that criteria and A and B as A and B iterate over the two columns of this. So in other words, A is Calvin Klein, B is this. Uh, this kind of code for Calvin Klein. If the string version of C is contained in the string version of B, that's the equivalent to like is number search or is number find in Excel. Uh, so if that string is contained, then give me this uh, this list of the criteria, the buyer, and the value exactly as we output here. Now the thing that I struggled with here was I was I did not have that zero. Um, so I'll, I'll just show you. It, it won't output correctly into the grid when I do that. Um, it just says calc, 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 calc. Uh, but if I turn it back into a list, you can see this is a list of lists. Um, but what I, what I couldn't figure out was how to flatten them um, in the right way. Maybe, again, some smart Python person will tell me how to do that. The reason that I'm interested in this is because let's say that there were multiple matches. So let's say that I add 3-3 three, three onto the end of this. then in this version, there's now, there's a match on Calvin Klein and a match on Levi's. And if I knew the right way to flatten that out, I think I could get this to cleverly return all of the multiple matches, but couldn't get that to work. Uh, what I could do, eventually figured it out, was I could just put a zero there to say, give me the, the first item of that, uh, and then that would stack neatly. And so that gave me the output. So again, more to learn, more to figure out, but uh, I'm I'm definitely getting a little faster and it's getting a little more familiar. So that's it. Pretty good first week. Uh, I'll be back sometime around the middle of next week and uh, and hopefully more regularly for a while after that. Thanks for watching. See you next time.